Uh, good morning, everybody, uh, and welcome to the uh, third quarter uh, FY22 Investor Update. Um, really pleased today to have with us uh, Andrew Booth, the Chief Executive Officer of Advanced Breaking Technology. What, what we'll do is we'll work through some formal uh, presentations. The ASX uh, um, has uh, a copy of that, which you'll be able to download. Um, and at the conclusion of these formal remarks, um, we're happy to take questions. Uh, and if you could just populate those in the questions below, we'll work through those each in turn. Um, but with, with, with those brief comments, I might pass over to you, Andrew, and it might be worthwhile for those that are a little less familiar with you to just start with a bit of your background as well. But over to you, Andrew. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian, and good morning. My name is Andrew Booth, and as the CEO of Advanced Breaking Technology, I'm delighted to present to you the quarter three results for FY22. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with ABT's history, uh, I'll just give you a, a brief overview. We're, we are an original manufacturer of sealed wet breaking technology. We are designed and we manufacture in Australia with uh, a domestic, uh, largely domestic supply chain. And we provide and service heavy duty applications, brake applications and safety solutions in rugged and high risk environments for our customers. And that's a good segue into our customers. We have an enviable blue chip customer base long-standing loyal companies operating across a range of industries, predominantly in mining, uh, but also diversifying more recently in defence, uh, civil and infrastructure and waste management. It's these valuable relationships which are providing ABT with a growing potential for strategic partnerships and, and that's supporting diversification of product geographic expansion and innovation. And I'll talk about that um, over the next few slides, particularly on our F23 outlook and beyond. Safety is core to ABT and using this ethos, safety continues to be fundamental and central to our brand and our vision. This safety principle combined with innovation is going to be leveraged to, dr to drive diversification, growth and profitability that's sustainable uh, for all, all of our stakeholders. I'm going to talk to you about our quarterly results. ABT has in the last quarter delivered record operating sales of $2.74 million and we are pr proudly sustaining a profitable um, trend uh, and as well as combined with a balance sheet that's strong and is poised for growth, including a cash balance of record cash balance of $1.96 million. ABT's cash position has been complemented with consecutive quarters of positive operating cash flow. It's boosting our cash on our balance sheet by $457,000 for the quarter and delivering a $769,000 year to date operating cash flow. There are some one off items that have driven this result one being our R&D tax payment. Uh, however, there is a very strong underlying basis, uh, which we are posting positive growth for. This bar chart illustrates not only a trend, but a sustained growth in revenue over 10 quarters on a prior comparable period basis. It's, it's a really strong result for ABT. And, uh, and one which we are, are, are very proud of. ABT remains focused on mining, undeniably on mining and mining services, uh, both here in Australia, as well as internationally. However, we continue to, to diversify focus on industries which include defence, waste management and infrastructure, among others. I'm going to give you a bit of a market overview for, uh, for ABT. We've achieved record export growth this year with a strong continued opportunity development pipeline in Australia. 
We are navigating some challenging supply chain disruptions, both ours as well as our customers this year. However, we are observing continued demand for industrial safety, both in mature markets as well as emerging markets offshore. And an example of this is uh, a new customer that we've recently secured in, uh, in Africa, uh, providing um, and, and representing uh, a, a strong uh, focus on ESG uh, in, in that market, as well as other markets, including Indonesia and, and South America. ABT's strategy for international will be to develop market-specific business planning with our distribution partners, as well as leveraging our strong, loyal blue chip customer base that, that I showed you in the couple of slides before, relationships in our home market that can springboard us into new market opportunities offshore. ABT's value proposition remains strong and it's based on three key principles on the left-hand side of this slide. It's, it's all about providing operating efficiencies in asset management. It's preventing injury and potential fatalities in high risk operating environments for our customers. And, and it's, preventing, it's prevention of harmful vehicle brake dust emissions in enclosed operating environments where air quality is absolutely critical. I'll talk a bit about more about our, our solutioning and the customer benefits uh, in the next few slides as we look to F, uh, F23 and beyond uh, for a strategic roadmap. I'm gonna talk a bit about uh, our product and our customer overview. Basically uh, this year, ABT is, is very proudly completed the first production milestone of the Hawkeye Hillhold break for Talus. The milestone represents an engineering capability that meets the high standards of a defense supplier. And I believe Hawkeye offers a blueprint of growth for ABT. It represents what we see as a repeatable model of co-partnered strategic development with the benefit of an OEM relationship, and this example, it was Talus, uh, as well as a customer offtake and a retention of valuable IP uh, for, for ABT. I'll talk a bit about how this blueprint for growth uh, is coming to life with some other examples uh, over, over the next couple of slides. We continue to focus on ESG trends and observe a growing um, trend of uh, environmental, social and governance across industries globally. ABT SIBS fail-safe solutions address all aspects of ESG, providing solutions for working environments of our customers that are, are both challenging uh, and high-risk workplace settings. And we do this with uh, through, through three, three key uh, elements, and that's providing 100% sealed brakes, uh, which keep brake dust emissions in. Uh, Non-exhaust emissions is, is a, an emerging uh, regula regula regulatory um, compliance um, element that is being introduced um, in North America and in Europe, uh, as well as in Japan, key markets for, uh, for the automotive industry. Our fail-safe brakes mitigate against unintended vehicle movements in high-risk settings. And our foul safe brakes also offer really strong asset management performance uh, for, uh, for large industrial and mining customers that have quite sophisticated uh, asset management and fleet management uh, requirements. Focusing on new product development, we'll continue to focus uh, and remain steadfastly focused on new product initiatives which drive scale, diversification and innovation. And we're leveraging macro trends across industries which include technology, uh, autonomous developments, uh, particularly in, in mining. We see WA where, where we are based as an autonomous hub uh, globally 
and that's driven by the mining sector uh, in Australia. We're seeing uh, electrification of, um, of, of fleet vehicles um, and, and an electrification trend that's uh, going beyond yellow goods and into a commercial white utility fleet where ABT really, really specialises in currently. Um, and it's, it just provides, it's providing us with stronger and growing applications for ABT sealed wet break innovation. And the, an example of this is in uh, an application which will be a heavy vehicle SIBs. Uh, an example is you know, a heavy vehicle application of ABT SIBs. Um, these, are, these will be trucks that operate in conditions no different to our current SIBs applications, and that's harsh off-road environments. And these, these vehicles and these fleets require high frequency maintenance and parts replacement. And they're operating in often in underground steep declines. Uh, in environments where uh, air quality is absol absolutely critical. And, and that's where uh, ABT zero emissions uh, capability uh, really comes into its fore. Our inorganic growth strategy is a corporate development strategy, uh, which continues to progress as we advance our engagement with target investments, uh, all about delivering uh, revenue diversification, um, technical capability, and a real focus on technology, scale, growth, and of course, um, superior returns for, uh, for our investors. And so our strategy is all about leveraging our, our core product intellectual property. It's developing and deepening our distribution and our supply networks. We will continue to diversify products, customers, industries, and ge geographies, and, and we will continue to drive organic and inorganic growth, growth initiatives, developing our people and, re and remaining true to the, our ethos of safety and sustainability. We remain sharply focused on our, on our strong capital base, and, and the return on investment that we will offer and continue to offer our, our shareholders. Our F23 uh, outlook, we believe that the foundations for growth are now in place, particularly with a very strong uh, ongoing uh, F22 financial, financial result. We'll continue to drive both innovation and diversification by leveraging our current product offering to both existing and new customers across a range of industries. As I said before, we will continue to drive organic and inorganic growth opportunities that can provide expanded product offering, uh, technology capability, and an increase in distribution of footprint through potential acquisitions and strategic partnerships. We will continue to expand Australian and uh, international distribution footprint via our key blue chip partnerships uh, that we have uh, established with a long and long standing and loyal customer base uh, within key geographic regions. And we'll position ABT for future growth uh, to participate in automotive megatrends that we're already seeing um, heavily driven in the mining sector, which is including autonomous electric, electric and connected vehicles. Uh, and so, so that's, that's our presentation uh, for today. I'll throw back to Adrian uh, and we'll, we'll hopefully get into uh, some discursive uh, Q&A. Yep. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Um, good, good run through. Um, so <clears throat> just a reminder for those um, that, are, that are joining us today, uh, at the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, you can add some questions. Um, Andrew, I've, I've got a question, a couple of questions that are already populated there. So I might just sort of get through each of those in turn and we'll and we'll kind of hopefully work through them. Um, so, so a simple one to start off with. Um, so, so given the, the positive cash flow position, and you mentioned the consecutive kind of process, um, do you sort of foresee a, a stronger investment in research and development in the future quarters coming ahead? Oh, absolutely. I mean, ABT has, uh, has a very strong uh, foundation of, uh, of R&D. Uh, and that's and that's evident in in the 
you know, the, the very strong IP that we have uh, in, in fail safe and safety solutions uh, for heavy industrial. Uh, R&D remains uh, a core uh, element of our strategic um, growth. And, uh, and I guess, you know, the, the difference moving forward in, in terms of what we've been able to formulate in F22 is, uh, is, is the Hawkeye model, where we're, we're more and more leveraging uh, our blue chip customer base uh, in partnership for a co-partnered, co-developed, co-invested uh, uh, product development that leverages both um, R&D tax incentive, uh, as well as a strong uh, relationship with a customer that has um, that has very specific and niche needs, uh, and and as well as uh, you know a tripartite triangulated um, uh, model which involves an OEM. And I think you know our our success with Hawkeye um, demonstrates that AVT has been able to deliver engineering capability uh, at at an, a, a defence and uh and tier one oem level thanks andrew um I, I suspect this next question you've kind of in part addressed but you may want to make some additional comments so can you and it was referencing the uh the global map that you put in one of your slides yeah can you discuss some of the challenges with accessing new global territories you know simply what is your route to market yeah look uh we we are seeing as i said before uh, record exports uh, international uh, demand. Uh, and this has been despite uh, during the a global pandemic, not being able to actually uh, get, get to these markets and be on the ground um, and deepen and develop uh, these really important distributor relationships uh, in these markets. However, we, we have established these strong relationships um, you know, in, in the past I guess four to five years, and 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 those relationships are continuing to deliver and come into play, uh, and and you know delivering, and, and we we can we can see those in the results for uh, for our year to date uh, F twenty two financials. Uh, I think moving forward uh, internationally, we will continue to uh, develop and deepen these important uh, in market. Uh, distributors that have really strong market knowledge uh, and reach uh, into their, their respective uh, markets. However, we're also going to uh, continue to uh, progress and, and develop uh, the, the strong relationships that we have with our, our customers in Australia, particularly global mining companies that can give us a springboard uh, directly into these offshore markets. So it's going to be a combination uh, of the two. Um, I think it's also worth noting that, you know, 2022 and, uh, and, and 2021 have, uh, have, have shown us that, you know, supply chains um, are, have been at risk and, and they have been disrupted both uh, our own, probably less so our own, because we, we have largely a domestic uh, supply chain uh, in Australia, uh, it's probably more the supply chains of our customers, and um, and I guess you know we've been able to successfully navigate that uh, and deliver uh, a record uh, export result uh, for F22. So I think the foundations uh, for international are are really strong. Uh, a few tweaks, um, but we're looking forward to actually being able to get on a plane uh, and and get to some of these markets uh, over over the next three months. And an example of that, I guess, is that we'll be attending uh, the Indaba uh, mine, uh, mine ex exhibition in, uh, in Johannesburg uh, next month. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Gee, the last couple of years have been very challenging to achieve some of those things you've spoken about. Um, so just in terms of hopping on and off planes. Uh, next question, um, this investor is interested to hear the success milestone with Hawkeye. Uh, can you share with us how this is a blueprint for future growth? It's a blueprint uh, for future growth uh, in that it involves uh, a, a, a combination of um, working strategically and in partnership 
with a customer that can provide us with a strong offtake at the end of that um, development journey. Uh, Hawkeye also um, includes uh, you know, an, an OEM uh, manuf defence manufacturer in uh, the, the global multinational um, company uh, being Talus. And I think, um, you know, ABT uh, has, has really demonstrated uh, a, a level of engineering capability uh, that's been able to successfully deliver to that very high standard um, that the defence uh, demands. Um, and, and I think, you know, that, that strategic journey of product development that, that leverages um, our, our really um, deep uh, level of intellectual property in sealed wet braking systems. Um, I, I think that that, that co-partner development uh, is a really strong blueprint for, uh, for future mo uh, growth models where we think we can, we believe that we can repeat uh, and, uh, and, and, and enhance and, and build out future examples of this model, uh, but, but with scale. So I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a small bite-sized example, uh, but it's a really important um, development uh, for ABT, um, both in our capability, uh, as well as um, demonstrating you know, a, a relationship that's developed and deepened um, involving both an OEM uh, and, and a, a, a large customer with a strong offtake at the back of it. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Clearly a key milestone for the group. So just getting down a little bit into the, uh, the weeds a little bit. So who, who are your nearest competitors and what is ABT's key differentiator? So uh, our key differentiator is, you know, is that we, we operate in, in a very niche, uh, but uh, what we see is a, a very lucrative market um, that has, you know, a, a, a base of customers uh, that, that are absolutely blue chip, um, both in um, heavy industrial, uh, in mining and in mining services. These are more often than not um, Australian and international customers uh, that have uh, multinational footprints uh, that we can continue to, to, to partner and, and leverage uh, for growth, both in Australia, there's still opportunities in Australia to diversify products um, and vehicle applications with these customers, as well as um, uh, geographic expansion into markets uh, that we may have a presence in now through our distributor uh, network, um, but also, but, the, but there's further growth uh, through this uh, leveraging this, this direct model um, with, it, with our blue chip customer base. In terms of our competition, uh, there is, there's one uh, a player that's based in the US. Uh, they, they produce uh, a, a, an IP that's relatively uh, similar to ABT, however, uh, ABT uh, differentiates itself through its absolute focus uh, in sealed wet braking systems. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily a diversified uh, manufacturer that has um, you know, perhaps stronger uh, focuses on areas in North America like agriculture and, uh, and civil infrastructure. ABT uh, is, is absolutely uh, the original supplier of uh, sealed wet brakes and has a very loyal and long-standing customer base in the mining and mining services sector. Thanks, Andrew. Um, next question, you've spoken uh, quite a bit about ESG. So uh, the question here is, look, many companies claim to be role models with respect yes. to ESG yes. and in effect, you know, simply greenwashing or ticking a box because they know what that's expected of them. But can you outline how you are playing a key role in this area and just with some tangible examples as well? Yeah, sure. So look, um, I'll, I'll start with the S in the ESG. You know, um, ABT 
prevents injuries and potential fatalities through unintended vehicle uh, movements. Uh, and these are often in high risk environments, um, uh, underground mining, above ground mining, uh, often in steep gradients where vehicles are relying uh, on uh, the handbrake or, or the gear system uh, to, keep that, to keep that vehicle stable. Um, you know, our technology and our, the, 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 the essential brains of our brake uh, allow that, you know, if you open the driver's door, the brake comes on. Um, you know, people working in high pressured, high risk environments uh, need this kind of safety uh, security um, that, that, that prevents potential fatalities. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a really strong element. Uh, and, and, and as I said before, safety is the foundation uh, of, of ABT's core brand and will continue to, to be our, our mission and our vision. In terms of the environment, this is a more recent uh, development uh, that's really, uh, uh, we're seeing good, uh, a lot of progress in, particularly in the North American markets. Um, the prevention of harmful brake dust emissions, uh, in, particularly in enclosed operating environments where our customers uh, are, are operating, air quality in underground mining is absolutely critical. And ABT's 100% sealed brake system prevents brake dust emissions uh, from emitting in, into, into the air. And, uh, you know, this is just, this is in a high, high risk, uh, heavy industrial setting. However, what we're going to see uh, in the next few years through um, passenger via vehicle and automotive regulation is um, the onset of non-exhaust emissions, because we've basically dealt with exhaust emissions over the last few years. The next wave of regulation will be non-exhaust emissions. And the biggest contributor to non-exhaust emissions uh, for all vehicles uh, is, is brake dust emissions. Um, and so, you know, ABT is, is really providing a forefront here. Uh, however, in a very niche uh, industrial setting, that probably won't change. We will always remain uh, focused on heavy industrial um, mining um, you know, vehicle applications, mine spec applications. Um, but, we're, but we believe that you know, our 100% sealed system is, is really protecting uh, the environments uh, that our customers are operating within. And I guess the last piece is the G and that's, that's providing uh, really good governance around asset management. Uh, and, and, you know, already, you know, ABT demonstrates operating efficiencies, uh, superior operating efficiencies for our brakes versus uh, a standard OEM brake system. Our customers are experiencing uh, very high requirements for maintenance and service uh, of brakes simply because of the, the really heavy rugged environments that are, those vehicles are operating in and that that means you know ingress caked on uh high saline uh um uh mud that that basically renders those brakes uh at risk uh without that high level of maintenance and so you know i think where we're going to take this this uh governance part is you know through leveraging um, technology, we're going to be able to deliver a more proactive asset management piece uh, for our customers. Um, and so, you know, I invite, invite our audience to watch this space over the next six months. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. It's, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's some good examples about how you're actually helping your clients um, actually achieve their own objectives and with respect to ESG. So thank you. Um, a couple of other questions. Um, so in terms of sales mix, uh, will ABT shift to more of an indirect selling model with partners or grow the direct sales force further? Look, I think uh, our sales model moving forward uh, will continue to be a combination of uh, direct and indirect. Uh, 
our, our Australian market is is 100% direct. And why would we change that when we are enjoying uh, very long-standing and loyal relationships um, with our end users? Um, I, I guess you know we have a strong network uh, that we rely on uh, in this direct model of uh, on-site installations. And, and that's probably an area that we will continue to really focus on and develop strategically, both organically and inorganically. It's that installer uh, network that provides us with a really important and valuable advocate uh, for our products. And most more recently, we've actually developed um, not just a really comprehensive uh, training uh, manual for our products, but we've also developed uh, a training, uh, an uh, in-person training um, model uh, that helps both our, our customers being end users, as well as those really important installation providers uh, with, with a deeper knowledge of our product and the benefits of those products so that they can uh, essentially uh, educate uh, and, and promote the importance of sealed wet break systems in, in mining and heavy industrial environments. Just in terms of uh, international, because that has largely been uh, an, an, an indirect model, uh, leveraging those really important distributor uh, relationships in market. Um, I think those partnerships are absolutely critical and important to um, ABT's growth but we're also going to leverage that blue chip customer base to springboard us uh, from you know, these long-standing Australian relationships, springboard us into some of these offshore markets in a direct format. Uh, and I think the combination of the two, the strengthening of our, of our uh, distributor network, uh, as well as the strengthening of our strategic direct relationships with blue chip mining customers in Australia, uh, we'll, we'll continue to grow and strengthen both our Australian and our international uh, distribution footprint. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so we've got uh, two final questions. So can you share some of your inorganic growth plans and how this will lead to superior shareholder returns? So uh, as, as I stated before, you know, uh, ABT uh, in, in recent years has developed a very strong balance sheet uh, that is strategically poised to support uh, both organic partnerships and inorganic opportunities. Um, I came into ABT uh, you know, nearly a year and a half ago uh, and I've worked really closely with the board uh, on developing uh, a corporate uh, strategy um, that, that looks at potential opportunities uh, for investment and joint ventures. We've, we've put a really strong emphasis uh, on diversifying ABT's uh, technical and technology capability. Um, in providing safety solutions uh, for heavy industrial uh, and high risk customer needs. We've looked at uh, our value chain, both our supply chain and our distribution network to uh, uncover potential targets that could provide us with uh, both scale and uh, technical capability as well as diversification of both product and customer. We are undeniably uh, focused um, to date on uh, mining and mining services, but we see future application opportunities in industries outside of mining uh, that include road and transport, for instance, uh, waste management and, uh, and civil uh, services, um, as well as uh, infrastructure. And, you know, as, as we approach an election uh, and, uh, and, a, and a budget deficit, the, 
you know, federal government uh, is planning to invest um, enormous uh, uh, fiscal stimulus into infrastructure. And, uh, and we see opportunity and application in those environments uh, that are not that dissimilar to, to the success that we've had in mining, both in Australia and internationally. So in terms of inorganic, uh, we are progressing um, conversations and developments with a number of key targets. These are businesses uh, that we've developed a strong understanding and, uh, and dialogue with. And, uh, and, and we, we, we think that um, we're going to uh, be able to you know, bring this to life over the next six to 12 months and deliver shareholder value as a result. Uh, that, that's great, Andrew. And uh, it's been a really good discussion. Just one really simple one to finish on. It's kind of more reflective from a personal perspective more than anything else. So what are the positives and negatives or challenges since you've been appointed the CEO earlier this year? That's a good question, Adrian. And um, look, I, I, think, <clears throat> I think all new CEOs that come into a business uh, have have uh, a number of, of different um, challenges that, uh, that that need to be overcome. <clears throat> I think uh, one of the you know really great things that I've inherited is um, a really positive and strong uh, culture in ABT. We're a listed company, but uh, but we're a very small uh, small team, and uh, and we operate. Uh, as if we are a family company. And I think that's one of our, our key benefits. We've got some really uh, talented and capable uh, people in our team. And I guess it's all about being able to inspire and lead uh, what is already a very successful, successful team. Um, look, I think uh, I've been gifted with, uh, with a performance, as you can see, that, uh, that in F F22 is extremely strong. Uh, however, I'm going to really sharply focus on, uh, on the strategic enhancement uh, of that performance uh, and, and really focus on driving partnerships uh, with, with just an immensely uh, uh, valuable blue chip customer base, um, both here in Australia and internationally. Look, there's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot of work to do. Um, uh, we remain sharply focused on a, a strong capital base uh, and, uh, and, and providing an ROI for our shareholders um, that continues to, uh, to grow. That's great. Look, Andrew, thanks so much for your insights and uh, sharing with us a bit of an update uh, for investors and thanks, thank you to those attendees who, who have joined the call. And I just might uh, pass back to Andrew for any kind of final remarks for the group. No, look, I, I want to, I just want to thank uh, everyone that's, that's joined us today. I really appreciate the opportunity to share with you what has been a very successful uh, year to date. And, uh, and we see uh, a strong quarter four uh, to, to finish off that, uh, that result for F22. Uh, but by no means are we, uh, are we resting on our laurels. We are absolutely uh, and fervently focused on, on the outlook for FY23. And I think, uh, as I said before, we're gifted with, with a really strong customer base that we will continue to work strategically with uh, over over the next twenty four months, the uh, the future is bright, and uh, and we're very excited, uh, and and I hope to uh, to revisit and uh, and talk to you again uh, very soon. Thanks, Andrew. Cheers, Adrian.